Hi everybody, I'm going to hurt your head a little bit today. So today I'm talking about epilepsy and there's lots of myths around epilepsy. People often uh, think of it as contagious or uh, if they're superstitious they think of it as um, uh, some kind of infliction. Well, I've got news for you, it's neither of those. Right. Talk to anybody who's medically trained and they will tell you that, that that's not the case with epilepsy. So the history of epilepsy is perhaps the person's had uh, brain disease or brain damage in the past and um, or they've had a recent accident and that's what's caused the problem. But there are no, a number of causes of epilepsy. We, we're not going to pin it down to one thing. And remember this, with people who have epilepsy, it can be that outside of the time that they're having any episodes, they're perfectly capable and able to do everything that anybody else can do. So you, we, we must sort of get out of this cycle of prejudice for people with epilepsy and be fair to, um, to them and help help them with their welfare if that need arises um, you're not going to get yourself into any trouble by helping an epileptic so please uh, avoid that line of thinking and we can now have um, productive sensible and helpful intervention and discussion about epilepsy so I'm just gonna have a couple of actors showing you uh, what epilepsy might look like it's different for different people so everybody thinks that or, or people might think that it, it it's uh, somebody convulsing on the floor not true again that's a, that's another myth epilepsy can have different effects it could just be somebody staring into space but I've got a couple of examples so if I can have my actors please Okay, so my actors have um, gone gone off tangent with their uh, uh, prescribed roles, but they're doing the version that people expect. But epileptics, for instance, um, I've seen that there's one particular uh, incident that I've dealt with. That person went and sat in the middle of a road. It could be that whilst the person is having an epileptic episode, you're going to clear the area you're going to make sure that you're away from them okay. so just make sure the air around them is clear so they can't hurt themselves on anything it's for their protection if you are aware of how long their epileptic episode uh, continued then you can wait for that period of time if not then wait two minutes and if the person isn't awake and talking to you in two minutes then you are calling for help those of you that are first aid trained will know that once the person stops fitting, you can do a primary assessment, you can go through your checks for an unconscious casualty. I've also posted a, a previous video on it and that's available for all the diamonds out there so you can refer back to that one. There's no restraining an epileptic, it's not going to be helpful. No, you don't need to get your smelly footwear and put it over their face, which is an intervention in one part of the world. Uh, you do not need to put anything in their mouth. All of these are myths and they can be harmful and hurtful to the casualty and yourself. So no restraining, no putting anything in the mouth, no, um, uh, no need for uh, trying to... Uh, cast a spell for them or anything like that you are just going to uh, observe and if necessary call for help now those people who have ongoing issues with epilepsy and the carer is with them they might be able to administer medication certainly the ambulance service and the medics can administer medication in the right circumstances to help with episodes so remember episodes are varied when you approach epileptic casualty let's say they're just staring into space avoid startling them avoid doing anything sudden avoid raising your voice you will just communicate with them normally and see what kind of response you're getting responses can be very very vague uh, so you need to understand that there's a breadth of symptoms with epilepsy 
and your intervention sometimes will be measured by the symptoms that they're experiencing. So if they're just sitting down somewhere safe, you don't need to do much. You can time it and then call for help. If it, proceeds, if it stops, they might say to you, I'm fine now. And they know it happens and they're fully aware and this is what they normally do. So it's worth asking them, what do you normally do when this happens? And give them a bit of time to reorient it. Equally, I've seen epileptic casualty fall to the floor. Within seconds, they wake up, they sit up and they walk off. They're quite used to it. If, you're, if it's a first epileptic episode, then yes, definitely medical help. Having one epileptic episode doesn't make you um, an epileptic. So there are uh, criteria for someone to be classed or diagnosed as epileptic. And you can have fits for lots of different reasons. People have fits when they're having heart attack or if they have head injuries. So just be careful as to how you manage this and what you're doing with the casualty. Obviously, first aid course is the best uh, way forward if you're going to be comprehensive in your intervention, but you've got some good guidance here and hopefully I've helped you with some of those myths that are out there so you can safely look after an epileptic and ensure their welfare and help them along. And remember that, that there are organizations out there that are dedicated to helping people with epilepsy and dedicated to helping the public understand epilepsy so by all means google them look them up and you'll get further information about it i hope that's been useful for you take care say goodbye <laughs> my actors bye, bye.